Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm indeed very excited this morning to be here to, um, you know, for our second part uh, from the session that I did uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, as indeed uh, Nesaya has uh, um, noted, that we are following uh, this wonderful book that has been written by uh, Apostle Moses, uh, Straight Forward Financial Growth, A Guide to Kingdom Wealth Creation. Yes, this is indeed a very, very good book that guides you through creating wealth and indeed as um, you know, people of the kingdom. Um, we, I think we were focusing on chapter 8, uh, which is uh, investing for growth. And uh, two weeks ago, I began by uh, reading the key scripture in uh, chapter 8, uh, which was in Matthew uh, 25 uh, chapters 14. And in that chapter, we had the parable of the, uh, you know, of the guys, of the, of, of the master who, of the talents, sorry. I, I, I just lost that. Yeah, the, par the parable of the talents. Um, the story is one that we've had um, preached to us several times about how the master left these three guys uh, with talents. One was uh, twenty, sorry, five talents. Another two, another one talent. Uh, Apmo begins by um, identifying in chapter 8, that indeed a talent was a unit of currency. I believe it was about 20 or so kilograms of silver. Um, I began by converting that into uh, today's currency. And uh, Google just noted that that would be about maybe 25,000 pounds. A talent would be equivalent to about 25,000 pounds. So for the guy who got um, five talents, that would be about um, 125,000 pounds. While the two is 70, sorry, it's about 50,000, and the other one was 25,000. Um, I think the key thing to me was that this guy gave this money according to his servant's abilities. He had noted something, you know, these three, I think this one is able to do this, this one is able to do that, that one is able to do that. Um, what really, um, I think, you know, um, Two weeks ago, I did not. That um, the guy who had got the one talent must have had some issues. I mean, for example, why didn't he ask his um, his friends on what to do? You know, this is a guy. You know, you're all together. You're all in the same church. You all, you know, eat, drink together. But the Bible says he straight away went and just hid this talent. Yeah? Quoting a lot of scriptures. <laughs> this brother was really good with scriptures. But <laughs> he did not know where to invest. I mean, earlier on, I think later on in that chapter, when the master comes back, he says, you could at least have invested my money in the bank. Yeah. So the guy had, you know, he did not even have knowledge that you can invest money in the bank. I mean, though, you know, you would have some little 
our interest. But our brother did not even know that. So I put it to you that um, what kind of um, um, opportunities have, um, have we missed by not, um, you know, by being like one of these, um, like this uh, other third guy. We're here in the same church, doing the same programs, but nothing. Yeah, this guy just heeds the talent. Right, moving on. Um, I think I have more notes that we are stewards. Something that we need to um, embrace as Christians. Something that needs to guide us in everything that we do with stewards. We'll be accountable. I think Pastor recently was preaching to us about those three accountabilities when the Lord comes back. We are accountable for the property he's given us. Accountable for the people he's brought into our lives. And we're also accountable for his presence. Yeah? So, being a steward, I also refer to um, something that uh, Pastor Tony preached to us many years ago about stewardship. Um, in the week, we, we had a meeting with some people, and uh, somebody brought up something very, very interesting that I've been thinking about. He brought, uh, he said, we need to consider our legacies. And I thought, wow, church is actually a family, right? Where is it in your will? <laughs> Where's, where's family church in your will? Hmm? Where's church family in your will? Yeah? I mean, by the way, this is something that, um, you know, our brothers, the Anglicans and Catholics do very well. They leave property to the church. Yeah? Something for us to consider. Yeah? Something for us to consider. So let me just, I'll just start recapping on what we, uh, what I spoke about two weeks ago. Yeah, two weeks ago, I, um, you know, I think showed you here like a triangle whereby I mentioned about, you know, um, how wealth is actually created. Yeah, being on the top of, of the triangle, being that we need to work, we need to manage our, we our money, and we also need to learn how to invest. I noted that for rich people, you know, they work in different ways. Their assets work for them. Their assets work for them. They're also good at managing, and they reinvest. So that cycle goes around. I also noted that um, each and every one of us has to be an investor. You should have invested in something. You should have invested in something or planning to invest in something. As long as you make a living, as long as you earn some money, yeah, we should be talking to each other and saying, hey, listen, yeah, I bought a treasury bill the other day that generated this much. Yeah? We should begin to have those conversations. Yeah. Um, I went on to say that uh, a lot has been spoken about work. Yeah. Over here, we, you know, unless we need to work, we need to work smart, we need to be passionate, be punctual, be persistent, and all that. And indeed, how we manage our money, how uh, we need to give and give and give. Yeah. How we need to budget. I think to me that is elementary. But the key thing in wealth. Oh, for wealth people, they've mastered the art of investment. Yeah? Um, I did not, but I also uh, wanted to add that some of us here might have assets. Yeah? Again, reading um, Pastor uh, Upmore's book um, and, and having done the, the coaching session, we had that session whereby you needed to list all your assets 
and then evaluate those as assets on a regular basis. Are your assets generating cash? Yeah? Are your assets generating cash? Yeah? Many of us might have assets just seated there. Yeah? Um, I know, I know I've, I've got, um, I've, let me just say, I've got, I've got a very close relative of mine who just had this wonderful asset, you know, a land title in a very, very posh place. And they've had it for a long time. But they just couldn't invest. You know, they would, you know, they would always say, one day I will invest, one day I'll invest. Until, you know, this land was attracting, you know, big shots somewhere. Somewhere where far, far, far away. <laughs> You <laughs> know, and uh, so yeah, we try to do this, try to do that, until we say, yeah, you know, why don't you sell this land, yeah, invest the money in something that will generate you income. Yeah, I'm glad to so. I'm glad to say we did so, and she is now. Uh, they're now enjoying. Um, um, some good returns on that. Um, I continued to talk about um, where and why we should indeed invest. Uh, I noted that the first thing that you need to do was to invest in yourself. Yeah? That we all need to invest in ourselves. Yeah? What is it that I don't know? What is it that I know? You know? Let's evaluate ourselves in this area. Yeah? If an opportunity came your way today, where would you invest and why? Yeah? Could it be that uh, the Lord is waiting for you to up your game in some of these things in order to bring uh, a blessing towards your way? Yeah? You need to have something that you know about. Something that we should share freely and say, hey, guys, this has worked or this works. Oh, you know, what works with you? What doesn't work? Yeah? Um, yeah. Invest in yourself. Yeah? As in develop a wealthy mindset. I spoke about, um, you know, a survey that was done on uh, rich people and what they do. These guys read books like a book a day, sorry, a book a week. And to them, when they were asked why, it was simple. I just need one idea. I need one idea like this to make it. So invest in yourself. Read about something. Okay? Study an area that you want to invest in. I noted how we have invested in so many different things, this, that, and the other. Lost money, been there, done this. Yeah? Okay? Avoid to get rich schemes. And indeed, once you're on that journey, you can start, you know, to diversify. Apmo talks about all those things, you know, not to put all your eggs in one basket. Um, I went on to talk about um, an area that, um, you know, interests me about and where I invest, which uh, was property. I, you know, narrated my uh, property journey, how it all started, how it was driven by my desires to, you know, have, um, uh, you know, um, to really house my, you know, accommodate my family. And uh, I think that's where I was, yeah, when I just got onto the property ladder. Um, 
I uh, wonder whether I say this, but I think um, my first property that I bought was um, uh, through the buy, through the right to buy scheme. And to me, um, that was a blessing. You know, the Bible talks about, um, I'll give you houses that you did not build and that sort of thing in Deuteronomy. And uh, um, I, I didn't see it like that then, but now I do. Now I really do, you know. I um, attracted a very small um, a discount at the time when I bought it. Uh, but now there are massive, massive discounts. Yeah, I hear up to a hundred thousand pounds. Yeah, I would really, really um, implore you if you have uh, a council property for you to explore. Yeah, of course I don't speak as a, a financial advisor. <laughs> I'm only here sharing. Uh, what um, uh, you know, what uh, I've, I've done, and indeed what uh, other friends have done, and indeed some people that I've uh, spoken to who have um, gone on to benefit uh, from such schemes. Yeah. So yes, look into it. Yeah. Let's just not wait for that house to be you. You know, for you to just be given a title. This could be. This could be that, um, you know, that the Lord has actually blessed you with a house that you didn't build. Yeah? I mean, if I had time to just tell you everything, you would probably agree with me. Yeah? But, yeah, that's how I got onto the uh, property ladder. There are indeed um, many benefits. Like, for example, you wouldn't, you know, if you have that right to buy or right to acquire, you would not need a deposit to buy such a property. Yeah? You would not need a deposit. Right? Okay. Um, let me just move on. Um, I just thought and said, okay, what would really benefit us this morning is maybe for me to share uh, what I did or uh, maybe what I do and maybe why. Um, I mean, in all this, you need to do something, right? S tell your neighbor, you need to do something. Things just don't happen. Yeah? Where wealth is concerned, yeah? You just don't earn it like that, yeah? You just don't sleep. <laughs> Yes, you just don't claim it. Mm. You just don't take it. I'm yet to read a scripture that says that. Yeah? Okay, number one. What did we do? Number one, we had a plan. Yeah? Uh, I think again two weeks ago, Pastor T in the morning preached to us about having a plan when you go to, when you go to pray. We had a plan. We always had a plan, yeah? Um, and indeed, our plan, and I believe, you know, most of the plans that we have maybe steam from our desires. And to me, that is godly because your desires are not my desires, yeah? There is a reason why God puts some desires into our hearts, and for us, and you know, particularly me, um, the it was always my plan to make sure that my family has somewhere decent to live. Yeah. Initially, that's how my property journey, as I shared with you, started. Yeah, we went through all that, you know, this and that, and we acquired the council property. But even before we acquired it. The plan was always to buy it. Yeah. We acquire it, buy it. Yeah. It was in the, the 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 ideal location, it was in the ideal property, but it was like, okay, let's buy it, then move on. Yeah. 
and that plan worked. Number two, things that we did. We prayed. Somebody say it with me, we prayed. Yes. You need to pray. Okay? Have your plan, but pray. Pray about it. Yeah? Some of you may not remember, but we prayed every Friday at LCF. We stayed behind and prayed. Our children grew up in, uh, you know, in their prams. We were in that prayer praying. Yeah? Wednesday, we had cell group in our home. Yeah? We had what we call a dangerous black book. <laughs> yeah? Oh, my goodness. And in that book, we had our desires. We had our goals. We, we had people we were praying for to get saved. Yeah? Uh, I can tell you... You know, if I were to go back to that book, most of the things we wrote down and prayed for, the Lord has given to us. <laughs> the Lord has answered all those prayers. Yeah? I mean, some of the people we prayed for to get born again are here. Stephen Limbers was one of those people in that book. Yes, he was in that book. And one day, he just walked in the cell group as we were praying. You know, some of my brothers were in that book. They have given their lives to the Lord. Yeah, so let's pray. But we did not just end there. Yeah, somebody say it with me, we did not end there. We acted. We had to do some action. Hmm? We had to do some action. Messiah here just quoted a scripture about, you know, um, it's God who gives us the power to make wealth. What a wonderful scripture. Adores, you know, read that scripture to me. God gives us wealth, you know. Missing those two key words. <laughs> yeah. God gives us wealth. Yeah, true. Because everything belongs to him. Yeah, and everything comes from him. But there's those two key words. He gives you power and make. Meaning that you, you need to make something. What is to make? To make is to create. It's to model. Yeah? It's to come up with something. It's to do something. That's what it is to make. I had this, um, this like, like a picture of us, you know, um, of at some point. When I used to believe that uh, just God gives you wealth, you just earn it, you just claim it. We all seated on a dining table with all our folks, all the families round the dining table. We're waiting for dinner. But no one has gone in the kitchen, no one went shopping, <laughs> no one went, um, you know. No one went to cook and mix. Eh? I, lo I love Katogo. Who knows Katogo from where I come from? Yes. Eh? No one cooked the beans. Eh? No one soaked them. Eh? No one peeled the matoke. Hmm? But I'm just there with my spoon waiting for my Katogo. Eh? And, and that's the picture I have. Pastor Grace last week spoke to us about a seed. Seed needs to be fertilized, needs to be pruned, harvested. Huh? You need to weed around some of these things. Yeah. So, what are we doing in this area? 
I'm so glad for uh, sessions like this that we can speak and indeed um, fashion one another. Yeah. So yes, um, I think once I did that, you know, some of this action led me to start researching around wealthy people. In the, again, two weeks ago, I, I read some stats here that were very, very depressing. Yeah. One percent of people owning seventy over seventy percent of wealth. Yeah. Then just five percent of people in this country are classified as wealthy. To be classified as wealthy, you need to have just about one point nine million. And I thought, wow. So if 1%, the top 1% own 70%, then 5% are millionaires. My analysis was that, okay, these 5% must own about 80% of wealth. <laughs> and we, the 95%, are now, that is, that is terrible stats. So, what do these guys, I mean, these wealthy people, where is their money? Yeah, where is their wealth? Yeah. First of all, I've also discovered that 85% um, of those wealthy people are actually self-made. Only 15% have, like, inherited this wealth. And I thought, wow. Because, you know, there's this tendency to think that, okay, these are all, you know, dukes and lords. You know, 85% of these people have just made their money, just like you and me. Okay? I thought, yes, that's an encouragement. What do they do? Hmm? Where's their wealth? Right, this is what I found out. These people have property. That's number one. Their money is in what? Property. And a lot of property. Number two. What do you think is number two? Shares. Okay, that's third. Number two. Something that we all have. It's in their pensions. Number two is, their pen is in pensions. Number three is in shares for the finance, the treasury bills and whatever. So let me just pick, you know, one of these, yeah? Each one of these and then we'll go through. Let me start with shares, yeah? These people have the treasury bills, the bonds, the what, yeah? I don't know whether you guys have worked with people who are so into that, yeah? People would come, I remember, you know, many years ago, people would come in and talk about, oh yes, I bought two shares. To me, it was like, mm, what is that? <laughs> yeah? I bought some bonds. Yeah? I bought some notes. Okay. They're just notes. <laughs> yeah? And this wealthy people's money is in these things. Yeah? About shares, I thought. Who is in shares here? Who knows something about shares? Could we have a champion here who looks into this area and just shares you know, on our platform and says, guys, hmm? I, I bought some two shares in this. Yeah? There's a good share here that is this, 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 like that. Yeah, you share that. Hmm? Where are the prayer warriors in this area that pray about shares, <laughs> stocks? Yes. Hmm? Why shouldn't we? Hmm? Now, the, the, the irony is this. There's someone buying these things today, and they're going to be multimillionaires in two, three, four years. Hmm? 
look at all these shares, all the Microsofts and whatever when they started, the Googles, the whatever, the Amazons. Yeah? Someone is going to get wealthy in the next few years just buying a few of those shares today. Why is it not one of us? Or all of us, if they dare share. Okay? Now, okay, let's move on. Pensions. Ah, oh, when I discovered this, I thought, my goodness. I mean, almost all of us here have pensions, don't we? The private one, yeah? Yeah? No? <sighs> oh, my goodness. Where do I start with this? Um, when I used to work, this many years ago, I used to work for Croydon. And, and um, there was this guy, actually, he, was, he was used to work in the pension department. He was a Ugandan, actually. And he would go around looking for people within, you know, who had those names, yeah, that he would relate with. And he would come wanting to talk to us about pensions. I said, uh, whatever. He said, okay, I'll come, I'll come. Come, there's all these meetings, there's the final salary scheme. And we didn't bother. We didn't bother. We thought we were young, <laughs> we would never get old. And still, we just did not want to know. It is my money. I'll give you. I'll, I'll give you another, another, another story. You know, uh, Jolly would know some. You know, the COS, the people that you know come in. A friend of mine brought a lot of those from uh, Uganda and many other places. So recently, she called me into a meeting to help her talk to our workers, and the workers were fighting. Said, Why did you enroll us in the pension? Why did you enroll us in a pension? Yeah. This <laughs> what is a pension? A pension you put in a percentage between three to twelve percent, yeah, and then your employer puts in an equal percentage. This is the second wealth item for people in this country. I remember people, when I was in working growing, and people who were just, um, I think that was the time when they had the final salary scheme, they took it out now. But people were retiring at, at, at 55, 57. Why? To just get, to get the final salary scheme. I wasn't 55, but you know, it was like, whatever. <laughs> I want all my money. Yeah. People were, people retire with, you know, a million pounds in, you know, in their pension kitty. How well do you know your pension? When was the last time you evaluated it? Yeah? Do you know the pensions are actually invested? Yeah? And they go up and down. For the last three, four years, how well did your pension do? Hmm? How well did your pension do? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Running out of time, yeah? How much is in there? Apmo talks about, um, you know, having done the coaching of us being accountable for all that we own. Yeah. For example, you can draw that pension when you reach 55. Yeah. But some of these pensions for the last years, they've been making like 2 3%. But this is your money. Especially if you're 55. Have you considered? Or could you? Um, of course, I'm not, um, uh, you know, I'm not qualified. But at least I know percentages, yeah? If I have so much money, um, you know, giving me 2%, 
and I find out that there's actually somewhere where I could invest it to give me 17%, where it is safe, of course, you know, there's always risk with investment. You know, why wouldn't I consider that? Why wouldn't I consider that? I mean, um, I would like to really call upon the, you know, our big service to bring somebody who knows about pension to talk to us. Because this is something that we all have. I mean, at least if you've worked or you work. And we need to evaluate our pensions, at least every year when you have. But uh, do you even receive, do you even receive a pension report every year? By law, you're supposed to receive one. I, as, I was, um, as I was researching about this, a family member were talking. And um, they noted that, you know, one of the people they work with was actually saying, I want to retire, I want to retire. I've just, I've, I've just put over 22 years uh, in my pension. I should have enough for me to live on and blah, blah. I mean, this person was listening. It just occurred to them that they had actually put in more years than the 22. But they did not know how much money they had in their pension kitty. For 25 years, you've been contributing to pensions, but you don't know how much is in there. Hmm? I mean, I don't want to show by show of hands how many of us really, really know their pension. Could we bring somebody here to talk to us about this source of wealth? The second most source of wealth. But we do not know. We are not aware. It is there. Did you also know that if you're single, yeah, if you're single, with some of these pension policies, you know, you don't, and if you pass away and your children are over 18, you only get, they only get back a small portion. <laughs> it is all in the small print. They, they don't get 100%. <laughs> if you're not married, you would only get a small portion. So, let's look into that, yeah? <laughs> um, I believe it is indeed more, you know, this pension thing is more important, you know, once you get to around 55, yeah, because at 55, you're allowed to take it, yeah, but let's, let's talk to someone who knows about these things, yeah. I mean, even the one that um, I told you it is between 3 and 12 percent. Yeah? What percentage do you contribute? This is money that gets off, that is deducted off your check every month. What percentage do you put into your, your pension? <laughs> yeah? Good. Okay. I've, talk, I've spoken about shares, I've spoken about pension. Property. Wow, wow, wow. This is an area that, like I say, that very, you know, interests me so, so much. And uh, um, I've actually researched quite a well, quite well into this area. Not that I know everything, but um, um, I've, I've developed such a passion that every week or every few days I, I learn something about property. Um, I'll just um, say that, um, you know, this is the number one source of wealth where these 5% millionaires have. Um, for example, do you know the percentage of people in this country that own 
two or more properties. <laughs> two or more. Two or more percentages. I mean, sorry, two or more properties. So I was researching and finding out why. Just about 3%, under 3% of their 100% that have bought properties. But just under 3% on a second own two or more properties. No wonder this is where the wealth is. You can see all those percentages decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. So why, I was asking myself, why is it that it's just 3%? Yeah. You look at the terms and conditions. You know, when you want to buy your second property, the type of mortgage you need to get, the deposit you need to put down is 25%. <laughs> so it's like, don't join us. <laughs> Some of these... Don't join us. But this is where people's wealth is. You look at, um, I was looking at the trend and focus of, of rent. Wow. <laughs> rent, even if there was a downtown or whatever, the economy is bad. Has, has anyone ever, you know, if you're renting, has, has your rent ever gone down? The arrows just go up. The arrows just go up. Yeah? While actually, property could dip. Yeah? And go up. Down. Yeah? But rent? That should tell you something. So, uh, how do people make money in property? What is this thing, property wealth? Property investment is and always will be one of the most stable and profitable investments out there. After all, you know, rent, there's always demand in real estate. Meaning that property investment offers huge potential. So, how do people make money in property? Traditional, you know, number one, is, you know, what we call a buy-to-let. They get a buy-to-let mortgage. That is the most common type of property investment. People, you know, you buy a residential property and rent it out. Yeah? I mean, there's about 10 different types that I'm just going to touch on here. Um, I think I'm mindful of time. Uh, how are we doing on time? Oh, about 10 more minutes. Lord have mercy. Okay. Simply, that's what it is. Yeah, you buy a property. But again, you know, there's many things that you need to consider. Yeah? People buy hotel rooms. Do you know that people buy hotel rooms and make money? Yeah? Somebody has a hotel. I can go and lease 20 rooms. Yeah? And then, you know, the hotel still manages the, the, the property and the whatever. But whatever comes out is mine. Yeah? People do student accommodation. Yeah? Again, that's a niche market there that, uh, you know, each of these requires specific skills and knowledge that you need to, to go into. Holiday homes, HMOs, hmm? HMOs, house of multiple occupancy. I think that's what I'm going to go into in a minute. Off plan. Do you know people make money? On off plan. Off plan is simply the developer comes and says, I'm going to develop 20 properties here. And all you need to do, you know, for those people that have money, 
the book 10 or 5. And then it takes two, three years by the time the property is developed, it's gone up in value. And they would sell that and move on. People specialize in that. People do um, serviced accommodation. Yeah, This is a very, very exciting one that I'm beginning to learn. I've got a friend who has about seven properties. They don't own them. They just rent them and rent them out. That's like rent to rent. And they make a lot of money. Yeah? Okay. Now, um, I, um, I've been practicing two of these things, which is, um, you know, um, buy to let and indeed HMOs. And to me, uh, these are the things, these are the key considerations. And these are things that I've um, actually learned over the years. Number one, I'm aware that, um, and indeed, recently I had uh, a chat with some of our friends, and they were saying, there is no money in property. My friend bought these properties, and they lost. And I listened, and I listened. I thought, okay, ask questions. Did they do this? Did they consider this? Did they do? No, they didn't do this. There's a tendency to think that you just buy a property, rent it out. Wrong. Yeah. Number one thing that you need to do is you need to treat it as a business. Hmm? And as a new business, you need skills, you need knowledge. I found that, um, you know, and I've had friends who have said, no, that we can't make money in, 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 in this, my property. I rented it out. It was done this. It was done that. It was done that. But did you treat it as a business? Did you go and acquire some skills? Do you know the ins and outs, the pros and cons? Yeah? Let me just browse through these so that we can have some questions. Number two. Did you even use professionals when you're buying this property? Who is your broker? Who is your solicitor? Have you got a plumber? Have you got an electrician? Yeah? All these things have let people down when it comes to their uh, property um, uh, businesses. Number three, before you even consider buying a property to rent, who is going to be your tenant? Hmm? Tenant types. Hmm? Tenant. <laughs> hmm? Some people just do professionals. Yeah, it's like some people don't like families at all. Hmm? Some people like families. <laughs> some people don't like animals. Some people love animals. Some people just do student accommodation. Yeah? Some people do social accommodation. When you bought that property, who was your tenant in mind? Did you research or you just got a tenant? Put them in. Hmm? <laughs> what type of property do you buy? A flat, a house? Yeah? Um, I've, got, I've got a friend who has, uh, you know, call, he called me and he has this six massive seven bedroom house. But where it is, you cannot do an HMO in it. It is one of those very posh areas that, you know, you can only rent it out to one family. And so that is difficult. But as you know, if it was a nature more, you could get so much money. But you know, where did you buy the house? The type of house, yeah, that you buy for this kind of business has to be totally different from what you would buy as you. Many of us, you know, take our preferences when we're buying properties for rent, and we take our preferences <laughs> instead of the business, and then we fail. Okay? 
Um, location. Location, location, location. There's a location, location for tenant and for indeed a type of tenant. If you're going to go for families, are there good schools in the area? Yeah? So determine your tenant, determine the property, determine the location, transport, health facilities, and all that. Then many of us have failed where it comes to people not knowing the law, your responsibilities as a landlord. I've got, I've got so many stories of how friends have actually lost property on this. By simply missing out. Laws change and there are so many demands on you as a landlord, what you need to do. And if you don't do that, I've got a friend who's just going through like a mental breakdown. Because the tenants have not paid then the property can't get them out because she did not register the deposit. When the deposit law came in, something that simple. Something that simple. And now the judge has ordered that um, she needs to pay them um, 30,000 pounds. She's left with no option apart from to sell the property and get the equity and pay the tenants. And she's just broken down. Yeah. Um, who is to manage this property for you? Is it the agency or you? Hmm? All these are questions for you to ask. Yeah, what's the most important thing about you as, as being a landlord? I've got people who um, who decided to, um, you know, th they rent this property up and they do it up so, so well. That's not what a tenant wants at times. Yeah? And they expect that this person is going to treat this property as I, you know, like you, wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, what the most important thing to me as a landlord is my rent. No, I'm just being honest. Because if the rent is not paid, the mortgages are not paid. So for me, I play it safe. I want rent. Okay? And for that reason, I, too, I do social housing. Yeah, that's a tenant that will, will trash the place, but hey, again, I've, I know how to mitigate that. But I will always get my rent. <laughs> yeah, I will always get my rent. Yeah. But again, these are things that come with experience, yeah? Are you into short term, long term? And lastly, what's your return on investment? before you get into any business. Yeah? Am I making any returns? How much am I investing? How much is returning to me? Okay? So thank you, thank you so much. I believe we've run out of time. <laughs> um, yeah, again, you know, there's a lot more with all these things. And, um, um, but like I said, uh, I'm, I'm not a financial advisor, um, um, please, please. <laughs> I'm just a brother in the Lord. <laughs> Sh sharing testimony and, uh, <laughs> and experiences. So please, uh, if you have a question or two, um, I would like to take that. How many minutes have we got, Ms. Hayat? Just one minute. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Uh,
sorry, Andrew. Thank you very much. That was really good. And I appreciate you an expert in property and everything. What would you advise somebody who's got no pension and they're just trying to sort themselves out? They've not worked because of legal status and they're just starting. But they would love to start like investing in property. They have no pension. They have no money. But they're just starting. They are not even in a council flat. They are just renting. So what would you advise? Where can that person start to turn their life around? Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Um, I, I believe I said in there that um, you need to have a plan. Yeah? Wherever you are, wherever the Lord has put you, yeah? Come up with a plan. Pastor Grace uh, last week was teaching about that seed, that little thing, whatever you have now, yeah? Don't despise it, however small it is, yeah? Maybe you've just got your papers, you've just started work. Let's work on your plan, yeah? What do I want? What are your desires, yeah? I spoke to you when we started, we didn't have anything. I, I, I spoke to you about, yeah? how um, I spent uh, my, my daughter's first birthday in a bed and breakfast. Yeah? We, we didn't have anything, but we had a plan. Yeah? We prayed about it. Yeah? We went out and walked. Yeah? And then God gives you results. So whatever, wherever you are, yeah, you can begin on your investment journey. You can start. We're not all the same, you know, different circumstances. We're not all the same. But at least say, okay, this is what I have. This is where I am. Then what? Have a plan. Pray. Work. Go into action. Hmm. Hmm. I was just going to supplement what you were saying about having a plan. Part of that plan needs to be where whatever our income, remember that 20% saving. Because if you're not saving, if you're eating everything that comes your way, then we can't even start to talk about investments. So I think the soft entry is save. 20% of your income, put it somewhere. That money will build. Um, while you have the b dreams and the plans, I think strategy is important. Very true, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was so good. Please hey. appreciate it. Um, I think my main takeaway from that is just like intentional, like all the like we can say all of these things right here today but like actually like walking it out and like being intentional with you know building on those things so yeah thank you so much um and yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the big service and yeah thank you guys all for coming